I made tons of research on this battery health issue on iPhones, exploring how to maintain your battery health as high as possible. I know that the average American changes their phone every two and a half years, but as someone who enjoys using my products until the very end, I will prepare this video. By watching this video from start to finish, you will have all the necessary information. I'm Erkut from Corditech and here is the ultimate guide for iPhones. First of all, batteries are chemicals that degrade over time and usage. If you are using your iPhone, you can't prevent degradation. But you can slow down the aging process. Let me show you how. When you use your iPhone, its battery goes through charge cycles. A charge cycle occurs when you use all of your battery's power, but not necessarily in a single charge. Apple claims that iPhones should maintain 18% health until you reach 500 cycles. You can check your cycle count by long pressing settings, click on battery and then click on the battery health section. If you have a Mac, you can also use coconut butter to easily see the number of cycles and your battery health. Feel free to share your cycle count and battery health in the comments to compare with others. Our goal in this video is to experience minimum health loss at a maximum cycle. Firstly, it's essential to use the charger and cable that came with the box as much as possible. Cheap and fake chargers can cause unnecessary heating and voltage issues in the battery. Original doesn't necessarily mean Apple's original charger. You can use an adapter for the trusted brand like Samsung at a lower cost. The key is to provide power reliably and consistently. Although it might sound old-fashioned, Fast charging seems to have a negative impact on battery health. As shown in the graph, the capacity of batteries decreases as the charging speed increases. My recommendation is to use a 5W charger overnight and 20W charger for daily use. If we agree on this, let's move on to the next topic. Secondly, charge levels. You have probably heard someone saying using between 20 to 80% is the healthiest scenario. Clichés are clichés because they are true. As seen in the chart, the closer the battery gets to 0% or 100%, the more deviation it experiences. Avoiding discharging your battery to 0% is important. The third and perhaps the most crucial point is the battery wear. Cycle and wear are two different things. A cycle means charging from 0 to 100% once. If a battery is charged from 0 to 100%, 10 units of wear occur. However, charging from 0 to 18% results in 2 units of wear, according to Equibatteries research. Another example is Apple's optimized charging technique aims to keep the charge at 18% until you wake up, then complete it to 100% before you pick up the phone. The reason is, not to keep the battery waiting unnecessary at high voltage. My suggestion is unplug your phone when it reaches 18% for the day and plug it back when it drops to 20%. Of course, if you are spending the entire day outside, there is no harm in charging to 100%, but our goal is to ensure longevity as much as possible. Fourthly, I can recommend changing your usage habits. For example, don't set the brightness too high. I understand you want to make the most of the features of your expensive phone and some may call me crazy but the best way to not to wear out a battery is basically not using it. So if you are use it as little as possible, you cause as little damage as possible. You can think of this as comparing the tires of a drifting car to the tires of a car that avoids sudden movements as much as possible. Another piece of advice is to try not to use your phone excessively in extremely hot temperatures. For instance, our phones can heat up abnormally at the beaches, and if we try to use them at high brightness, they will heat up even more, causing the most significant damage to the batteries. Another recommendation I have is something you can do right now. Turn off background refresh for unnecessary apps. You can access this in through settings, general, and background refresh. For example, I don't want apps like McDonald's or Mango to refresh in the background because they are not apps frequently I use. And even if they refresh occasionally, when I enter them, I won't lose anything. So I turn off background refresh for them. I keep apps like WhatsApp and Instagram, which I use frequently throughout the day, open. 
This feature will greatly benefit you in terms of daily battery usage. Fifthly and lastly, if you are not going to use your phone for an extended period, it's advisable to turn it off at around 16%. Leaving it at extremes like 0% or 100% will unnecessarily stress the battery. Leaving it at around 16% is much healthier for the battery. By applying all these practices, you can keep your battery health high for a longer time than usual. Despite Apple predicting a 10% health loss each year, I have almost completed 4 years with my phone and still at 78% health. Additionally, using the original battery without replacement will also increase the resale value of the phone. Put yourself in the buyer's shoes. You are going to buy a used phone and you have two options. One has had its battery replaced by a cheaper phone repair shop and it shows 100% health, while the other has never been replaced and appears to have 18% health with the original Apple battery. Which one would you prefer? Your answer will express the meaning of this video to you. Before the video ends, I just wanted to show you the timeline of the editing. It took me weeks to produce this nearly 7 minutes long video, so I put a lot of work and research for it. A like and a subscription would be very nice. You can also check out my latest video here, where I talk about art browser, which I love. Thank you so much for watching.